Hey, I missed you. You know what I also miss? Those Saturday mornings when you wake up really early even though you fucking hate the morning. <laughs> That's only you, man. And you sit down at the TV and you jam jams and you got to watch Saturday morning cartoons. You know, the special ones that didn't come on throughout the day. Well, dude, did you have cable at the time? Of course. I didn't. Oh. So I had to watch like that like four kids bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, that's what that's those are the cartoons I was talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was yeah gonna say, I didn't like, get to watch. You didn't kids. have like Directv or any of that shit where it was like you know you can fucking go to Cartoon Network and watch all the premium fucking cartoons. You could you consider those premium? That's interesting. I was yeah, because I didn't have premium. Cartoon Network. I had like it was like Channel Twelve or some shit like. Yeah, that. but those are good cartoons. <laughs> those are good cartoons. I'm not saying they're not, but I'm just saying like when you had access to like different cartoon like show networks like fucking nickelodeon and yeah. fucking cartoon like that was premium compared to like cable right yeah well no because hear me out anyway <laughs> this is couch surfing <laughs> it's your boy maui and your boy waffles Now, <laughs> yeah, wait. go ahead. Um, okay, so hear me out. I'm, I'm basically now realizing I'm on the complete opposite end of the spectrum from you. Because I grew up, my parents were like, we love our child, we really do, but god damn it, <laughs> he doesn't shut the fuck up. So they gave me a GameCube at the age of five, <laughs> and then they bought every single cartoon channel they could. Except Boomerang, because that was extra. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, Boomerang had, like, all the OG fucking yeah. cartoon shows. I remember my grandma had, like, all this. She had, like, direct TV because she would watch her uh, Filipino soaps. And whenever she wasn't, that's when I would, like, get my access to, like, again, to what I call more of the premium cartoon shows. Yeah, I and get I, it. Well, but, but, like, when I was at home, like, I didn't have any of that shit. Like, all my shit was just, like... I don't know, like like I said, it was like that four kids TV on like, and you had like maybe a two hour window of just cartoons, and then after that, it it was like news, you know? Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, yeah, because I remember they would be like, "Thanks for watching," yeah. and then they'd be like, "Yeah, so now we're here at the flea market." <laughs> yeah, right. Or something. You're totally right. I'm sorry, but <laughs> dude, I'm good. You got you got you eventually got to watch them with grandma and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. I remember. It was so funny because when in the summers <laughs> for me, when I go visit my family, that's when I couldn't watch cartoons because my family was like, Kendall, you're 13. Why you watch <laughs> cartoons? And I'm like, what am I, what else am I supposed to watch? So they're like, look at the TV. There are plenty of adult things for you to watch. And you know what I watched, Steve? You know what I watched for a whole month? What's that? Duck Dynasty Marathon. Duck Dynasty, interesting. A Duck Dynasty marathon. See, when I got out of like cartoons, I got into like history, the History Channel and like National Geographic. Oh, yeah, I didn't know where that channel was. Do you know what Cox Cable is? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the cable they use in Nebraska. Yeah, they use it in Arizona too. It's weird. It's interesting for sure. <laughs> definitely not Comcast. That's a, that's definitely not it. Not no. sponsored. Arizona had like Directv, Cox. And that was pretty much it. Yeah, I know. It's huge. I don't know how they got that far with the kind of interface. But regardless, we're talking about cartoons today. And I hope you enjoy it. So here's how the game's going to be played. We have our producer, the lovely... And me. Besood. Yes. Because <laughs> I'll throw some cartoons. So we're going to throw out shows. And we're going to... We're going to... on. In our personal opinion, we'll decide if they're overrated shows or underrated shows. Yes. And I just want to let everybody know, yes, I am the only one without a laptop. I'm not old enough or mature enough to do the whole laptop thing. You would just get, yeah, you would just be off way off topic. I would, <laughs> You're goddamn I would Google the most obscure things to win arguments. It would be. <laughs> but we're not, I mean, we, we will get to some arguments probably. Oh, yeah. No, I'm ready to take the opposite side of whatever you take for the rest of this. But don't don't just take the opposite. Take take what no, you, but I gain just, satisfaction. Just from it. take what you feel is right, and if we agree, we agree. If we don't, then we can go into that discussion. I guess we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. Let's, let's start with let's start with the one that's just been hyped up now, or not hyped up, but like has made like another comeback. Mm. Avatar: The Last Airbender. Avatar: The Last Airbender. Overrated, yeah. underrated. Okay. <laughs> It's, Not, it's it's definitely here's some context i've looked on a couple of these like top 10 cartoon lists or like tier lists and i've only seen it in like s tier or most times number one i say it's i said that's exactly where it should be i don't say it's overrated or underrated but i it's a, a, an amazing cartoon when you consider it a cartoon <laughs> like hear me out <laughs> what do you, do you look at that? When you consider a cartoon, what else would you actually, consider? Actually, actually, no. You know what? Change my mind. No, I changed my mind. Think it's overrated. Over- overrated. Yeah. I realized something when I watched Legend of Korra. Aang was wait, a wait, fuck- wait. Legend of Korra is a different show. No, we're no, no. Ta- we're just out. talking about Avatar: Last Airbender. Fine. Airman. Fine. We'll Aang- get to Legend of Korra next. All right. Fine. Aang is. Aang is. I get it. He's going through this emo- emotional journey. Eleven-year-old He's boy. A, yeah. Effectively, Captain America with bending abilities. That's it. He's like, this is for justice. This is for peace. Be the best person you can be. But also, I'm going to sometimes murder a lot of people that we're just not going to talk about. And we're going to consider me a pacifist. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who did he murder? The entire Fire Nation Navy? <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> the entire Fire Nation Navy? I wouldn't say he murdered them, but he allowed them to be killed, right? Because... I mean, his whole goal in that was just to take out the top guy, and he didn't even kill him. All right, what about any time he hit anybody with a rock in the Avatar state? <laughs> you never saw those motherfuckers. <laughs> he hit him with a rock, they were gone. <laughs> but there, it was implied that they lived. It was, impl- it, it was implied that they lived? Yeah. Okay, hear me out. You look at any of else bend rocks, right, in the, in the Avatar world. And Dude, if we're like, basing this on real physics, they No, no, no. That. I'm not basing it off of any real physics. I'm basing this off of pure what they showed us. You see Toph bend somebody, boom, hits him with a rock, and he's boss. Ah! Uh, you see Aang go into the Avatar state using rocks. They're spinning at like five, like at Mach 5, just spinning around his ass, creating a perfect line that you can't even see. I don't think he ever killed anyone in the Avatar state, no? He killed tons of people in the Avatar state. All I'm saying is un- overrated oh, yeah, over in the sense that the – what he they what the main character is trying to do the whole time he just really isn't trying to do. I I like I like the whole concept of the show. I love the show in general. I really didn't like Aang. I, I know that he was like an eleven year old boy. I know that he was like because I would say that Avatar is just a tiny bit overrated. Not 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 like completely overrated. Like it's like uh okay. I think it's still number one. Okay. I do think it's number one. I just think they could have made Aang like I agree. less of a bitch. I agree. I, I love watching it. I always will love it, you know. Like, But here's another thing, by the way. Katara <laughs> made a, effectively a whole season oh about God. herself and getting over, like, what the Fire Nation is doing. And everybody there was like, yeah, I know. The Fire Nation's fucked us up, too, you know. And she was like, no, I have to go murder no, the yeah, person right? that killed my mother. And everybody was like, that's not going to help anything. She took it away. Yeah, she took it one step too far. Like, like for the entire plot of the show being get Aang to learn all four elements, fight the Fire Lord, she did effectively take a good solid amount of time to go and say, while everybody else is getting ready for the meteorite coming down and the eclipse and everything, I'm going to – I'm going to go off. I'll be back. I'm going to take Aang's Fire Lord instructor that he's just started teaching him, and we're going to go murk this fool real fast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, next. Legend of Korra. I think Legend that one's Korra. super fucking overrated. That one is overrated, but hear me out. I Actually, you know, I say it's underrated. Legend of Korra showed up. Korra I think, showed I up. think the last seasons kind of saved it a little bit, right? Well, no, hear me out, right? Korra showed up, right? And when Aang was Avatar, <laughs> Aang, all he effectively did was save everybody from the Nazis. <laughs> okay? That's what he did, right? You look at Korra. Korra has to mitigate spirits and humans for all intents and purposes, right? Only person that can do that. Second, everybody in the world when they had to fight Aang, they didn't know the Avatar was back. It's true. Right? They were like, oh shit, an airbender? Ah! Yeah. And then when Korra became Avatar, everybody was like, oh, okay. No, no, no. We got this now. We got planning. <laughs> we got skills. We got ideas. Like, they were ready for him. Effectively, all Aang had to do was fight a bunch of dumb guards. To, I, 
Yeah, I think what makes this show overrated is when people compare it to The Last Airbender. I don't think so at all. It, I think it really specifies a lot of more about what the Avatar was besides just a guy who could throw rocks, water, fire, and air, which is what Aang made it all about. Aang made, it was an amazing show where we just watched Aang grow in power, but he never mitigated countries. He never you know, had to please the people. He didn't even stay in a city until he fucking, killed, <laughs> fucking defeated the Fire Lord. But Korra had to do all that shit. And still be a hero. <laughs> you ask me if you it's just like taking the president and saying, also, we need you to go fight in Afghanistan. <laughs> like that's effectively what they did to Cora. <laughs> that's why I say it's underrated. Not enough people give her that respect. <laughs> I think yeah. I mean, I can see your point of view. I can see how it could be underrated. I don't know. I just never I saw how they were making Avatar Korra, and like I said, I made that comparison to how they made The Last Airbender, and I was just like, it wasn't, to me, it wasn't as quality as Last Airbender. Just personally. I'll give you that. Just personally. I thought they could have put a lot more effort, and I thought it was one of those things that they kind of like, they put half a thought into, and they slapstick the rest of it. Yeah. I will also say, to be fair, Korra is dumb. So is Aang. No, no, but like, Aang was like... Always listening to his friends, you know? Like, if Katara was like, Aang, stop, he'd be like, okay. <laughs> See, but here's the problem with Aang, though, is like, Aang was like, okay, and then he would go mope for like a fucking, like, three episodes. Yeah, but go on. If you go mope around in the vicinity of your friends, you're still safe. Katara would be like, I'm. Or not Katara. Korra. Korra would be like, I'm sad. I'm gonna go fight the bad guy on my own to get my anger issues out. And then get, she'd get captured. <laughs> Yeah, and then she'd get her ass whooped. <laughs> All right, do you have a Next. do you have a show for us? Oh, we can do the one I was talking about earlier. You want to do SpongeBob? Oh, SpongeBob. Okay, I'm gonna let you take this. Oh, dude, I think I think after like the first three seasons of SpongeBob, it just became super overrated. Really? Yeah. Really? Me and Cassie just had a SpongeBob movie marathon. <laughs> <laughs> I just think like they stopped three movies. I don't know. I just felt like the quality of the episode just kind of dropped after that. And, like, the originality, too, just kind of started tapering off. Well, I, I understand what you're, what you're getting at, right? Because that's what that's a risk you run with the kind of show SpongeBob is. There's, no, there's continuity in the sense where they use the same scenes, the same people. That's it. They just throw random antics into every episode. Yeah, I mean, that was the whole point of it. Right. But like I just like I said, I just felt like they just kept reusing certain antics and it just became it just got mundane to me. I see that. I mean, I don't know. I did really just watch seasons one through seven, marathoned it, and <laughs> then watch those two watch those uh two, three movies. I think it is overrated, you hear me? Because it's just like Yes, it's a super long running show. There's, they're on season 13 right now. I feel like a lot of people our age would probably put SpongeBob in their top 10s, and I wouldn't disagree. Again, if we're looking at like the first few seasons, but after like season four, five, I don't know. Like I said, it just becomes like repetitive and just like there was no like I don't know. Every laugh value I got out of it at the first three seasons kind of just like repeated itself in the second. When you tell a joke over and over again, it just becomes less funny. I will, yeah. Because <laughs> I will not lie. When when I'm watching the first three seasons, you know, and I get a little, you know, uh, loose, <laughs> it is so fucking hilarious. And then when I get to like season seven, I'm really not laughing anymore, and I'm just like, what? What's going on here? Like, there was a whole episode. There was a whole episode about Neptune having a birthday. And SpongeBob has to go rescue his son. And the reason why Neptune and his son don't get along is because Neptune's son's like a pacifist who believes in science. But he's also an Olympian god. <laughs> yeah, right. Right? So It's kind of like a face system. <laughs> right. But but in the sense where, like, his, his dad went, until you can learn that you don't need to give a fuck about these mortals down here okay we try to cure their diseases we don't get sick like he, he had a cure for all human diseases and he slapped it out of his hands he's like gods don't get sick and so he shrunk them into like this small put them in a cage and put them on an island for like a thousand years 
And that's, you know, that's not funny to me anymore because we can, and like this will segue or like, we'll take this into another topic, another episode, but like we can go into straight up how like those mytholo- mythologies came along. Oh no, dude. I just did a whole paper on that shit. I know, fun but fact. I'm saying later, bro. I'm saying later. Fun. We'll save that for later. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do my fun fact another day. What do you got for us? Hmm. How about, uh, fairly odd parents, fairly odd parents. So underrated. Overrated. O- overrated, you say? So overrated. It's just I don't know, man. Hear me out. It the concept is great. I never really liked Timmy. <laughs> Timmy was a fucking asshole. <laughs> Timmy's whole deal was like, remember that episode you wish he wasn't born? <laughs> they did a whole uh what's that one movie? Fuck. What's that one movie called? The classic movie where the guy wished he wasn't born and then they go they did it. What? Once upon a Christmas, but I have no idea. You guys really don't know that movie. <laughs> your 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 explanation of it is not giving us he any context. He wishes he wasn't born, and then an angel comes and they take him and see what the world was like if he never was born. And so, the person he works for would have been a homeless like wreck, and uh, the bar that he uh, his fam his friend owned would have actually been owned by like a white person instead of. Yeah, I have no idea what you're... Can you Google it? <laughs> I don't know how to de- Google that description. Like, is it a Christmas, Christmas movie? Christmas movie. About not being born. Okay. It's a wonderful life. Yes! <laughs> oh. You guys have not seen A Wonderful Life? <laughs> no, I haven't. Really? Yeah. You haven't seen it? You haven't seen it? And you I'm not a big it. Christmas movie. I'm not a big Christmas... The only Christmas... There's two Christmas uh, movies I, I've seen that I really enjoy. Elf and A Christmas Story. Which one's A Christmas Story? The one where oh, you're, with the gun? Yeah, shoot your eye out, kid. Well, I didn't like that one. But we'll get into that. <laughs> I'm uh, just kidding. It was, no, yeah, pretty, we'll it was pretty funny. No, okay. I'll, I'll give it to you, I guess. <laughs> um, but back to Fairly Odd Parents. Yeah, back to the Fairly Odd Parents. Um, no, you think it's overrated? Well, why do you? What do you? I think? mean, like, I kind of like those concepts of him going into that, because like, Some, okay, because like you, people, people contemplate that shit, right? People are like, what happens if I was never born? They try to, they try to replicate that idea. They try to show it a little bit. I mean, just like in the movie A Wonderful Life, I've never seen it, <laughs> but from your description, they're trying to show you that maybe it's not as bad as you think. You know, okay. maybe you not being, or maybe you being in this world isn't as bad as you think. Okay. They they take those concepts like he took he wished. I remember one episode was like when he wished everyone on the planet was gone except for him and the chick he was trying to bang. Yeah. Right. Like. He also wished to be the most wanted person on the planet. (laughs) But I mean, I feel like it's to me. I really like the show because it just just makes you like. They. I feel like they're just like what ifs. They're just doing like the biggest what ifs that they can. I get that. I get that. And what if I was a baby again? Right? Remember that episode when he was a baby, no. and he had to spell out how to like I wish to be an adult, like a kid again, and like fucking would. Here's here's what I remember. <laughs> here's what I remember from this whole show because I haven't seen Fairly Odd Parents in a long time. But here's why I say it's overrated. If you genuinely look at it, it was just Timmy. It was just Timmy going like if you remember. That episode where Jurgen von Strangle goes and he he shows everybody's unwished locker. I love Jurgen. All the (laughs) all the other children around the world who have fairly odd parents are their wish lockers are nice and neat, and Timmy's is just full of all the shit because every single thing he wishes for has to be unfucking wished. Everything that motherfucker wishes for. I mean, okay, but if you didn't. If you had that power to wish for anything you wanted, wouldn't you, like, to some degree, wish for, like, everything you, you wanted at one point and realize, oh, it didn't work out? All right, get this, get that shit out of here. Um, no? If I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, if I, I think you would kid, be right up that alley, homie. If I was a kid, okay. <laughs> Even now, I think you would be like, yeah, give me that, give me that, I'll wish for that, I wish for this. No. And then, no, like, no. at one point, you'd be like, oh, actually, I don't need that. I don't need this. You don't think... If- if 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 two tiny beings popped up out of nowhere and said, "We'll give you the power of literal God," 
<laughs> I'd be pretty concerned. <laughs> I'd be kind of careful about what the fuck I'm wishing for, just like every other fucking kid on that planet, except for him. He just comes around. He wishes yeah. for cheese pants. He wishes for cheese pants. And guess what happened? Okay, actually, to be fair. Like, wouldn't you do that just to see if it was, like, legitimately possible? No, I wouldn't possible? wish for cheese pants. <laughs> I kind of – I probably wouldn't, but, like – You I wish for cheese pants. Yeah, I think you would. <laughs> Cinnabon pants. Cinnabon pants. Oh. For sure. There you go. <laughs> yeah, see? Okay, he like, see? <laughs> but I wouldn't unwish Cinnabon. Once you crack the door, it starts to no, but I swing wide open. <laughs> there, just, I just under, I just know. Okay, hear me out. Hear me out. I remember when I was a kid a long time ago, I asked my mom a very particular question. It was when the movie The Mask came out. Okay, the movie The Mask. You guys remember that? Yeah. And I was like, Mom, do you think I would be a good person for The Mask? She flat out looked at me and she was like, no, you're not responsible enough. And I changed. And that is why. You changed? <laughs> when? <laughs> Show us. <laughs> All right. No, you're fucking right. You got me. When you, you got me. I totally abused that fucking power. But it doesn't For make sure. me right. No, I'm not saying I it makes anyone right. right. He doesn't. He like, doesn't wouldn't mean. you take that curiosity? Okay. Well, then what about the fact when they had a baby? What was that for? All right, well, so, like, that was, like, into, like, season, like, seven. Again, like, once it gets into later seasons, they start to, like, at least they try to, like, add something. On, like, like, did they add anything new to SpongeBob's, like, later up seasons? Didn't they make Patrick dumber? Well, they I feel like he was, like, dumber. but, like, that was his, like, stereotype, right? Was that he was always dumb, right? But, like, in, yeah. in the Fairly Odd Parents, they tried to change it up by adding a new character, right? Like, did they ever do that in SpongeBob? No. So at least they tried to make some some things different. That's true. I think it's a little. They got a dog. <laughs> they did. They got a very odd dog. After the kid was after yeah after they had a baby, I kind of stopped. I will say it. this. I think it's underrated. I will. based off what I was just arguing with you about. I think you you may feel that way. <laughs> yeah, I do. This is a friendly show. I will say this. Fairly Odd Parents made certain things that could have never happened possible, such as certain crossover movies. That I fell in love with. Oh, I was going to say, our next one is Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy Neutron. Uh, I believe that's so underrated. Not enough people give it the props I, it deserves. I agree. I 100% agree. I think it was a really good show. I just think the cartoon style was a little... Also, I mean, was a little funky in my opinion. But, like... Because just because, like, they had no... I don't know a lot of cartoons that came out with that 3D animation style. I know. It was one of the first of its kinds. It, it was, was the first. You saying it was super, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was I agree. It's super expensive. But that's what I'm saying. It was like I, I like that. Yeah. It, it was kind of uncomfortable for a lot of people. I'm guessing that's why it wasn't as like loved as many people thought. But like, I mean, they actually tried to. I don't know if they actually tried to use real science to like back. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But, but I, I want to say this before we move on. To be fair, most of Timmy's problems were due to the fact that Cosmo was so dumb. And if you put me and Cosmo in the same fucking room, oh, dude, <laughs> yes. But go back to Jimmy Neutron, I think, yeah, well, it's just the only problem with Jimmy Neutron I feel like people didn't really get was it wasn't just wildness. Like, if you look at Fairy Odd Parents, the whole plot is Timmy wishes for something, and his two godly parents make it happen with a flick of their wands, right? Yeah. And sometimes he has to go save them because, you know, you have the love and be merry or – I remember there was that whole movie. Anyway, but Jimmy – Jimmy was like, I may, he's just science and it went wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? No, yeah, for sure. Remember I mean that? like the, the I think the, the most like extreme they went was the movie. Right when they were abducted by aliens. Actually, I like the I really like that episode where um, Sheen gives Libby the wrong present and turns her into an evil dictator <laughs> in the future. And so, and he becomes he becomes a professional uh, dumpster diver because of the fact that <laughs> Libby took over and he couldn't do science anymore. You remember <laughs> that episode? I don't. It was hilarious. He was so stupid. Yeah, and you know what made that those like those. I feel like those two two shows complemented each other with their crossovers, yeah. which made them both, in my again, in my opinion, underrated. Right. No one ever went with that idea. They're like, "Oh, dude, crossing over cartoons? What?" Well, they did it, and then everybody else was like, "Whoa!" Oh, yeah. like, Disney Channel did that whole thing with with I, the live action, but that's not cartoons. Those aren't that's cartoons. Crazy. If you want a Disney, Disney, uh, oh, uh, Phineas and Ferb for Disney Channel. 
Oh, no. Yeah, Finney's very actually solid. Also, another that is white solid. show. <laughs> but is it overrated? Is Phineas and Ferb overrated? You know, I I have no capability of saying it is. I've rewatched that that entire series like five this times. Is it overrated? <laughs> uh, I feel like a lot of people gave it a lot of hype. Humans, what can I say? It's better than live action TV. <laughs> I felt like it got. So, I I feel like it got so much hype. So much hype. But yeah. Well, so did the Fairly Odd Parents. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Fairly Odd Parents got as much hype as Phineas and Ferb. Well, I would disagree with that. Yeah, but hear me out. Hear me out. If I'm being honest, right? If you look at Fairly Odd Parents, that show really kind of like dropped off once we grew out of it, right? Phineas and Ferb dropped after we should have grown out of cartoons. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think uh, Phineas and Ferb, they did their marketing so that way when kids were finishing out that school year, it mm. dropped in the summer. So you actually got the whole summer to watch every single day or whatever. So they were just like, I feel like that might uh, be nice. You know what really got people too was their I, – I really loved this, but their catchy-ass theme song, dude. That, is that thing true, fucking yeah. snack, snack, no, just no grabbed fucking lies, everyone. They had, some, they, had some, they had some beats in that show. I didn't even like – for some reason, they just – Remember the beach episode? And Fur fucking drops those bars. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I think the dynamic of Phineas and Ferb also really played well with it. Because if you just look at Fairly Odd Parents or Jimmy Neutron, you know, it's usually like they have some characters, but there's they're not like going as far as Phineas and Ferb did. Like Baljeet? Baljeet's whole character has like a like a whole person behind him. <laughs> Right? Yes, he's a stereotypical Asian. I mean, stereotypical Indian dude. I just but, laughed because I saw your Instagram post. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. If you guys don't know, you know that Baljeet like picture where like he has some face. <laughs> that's our producer. And he has like the fucking like gold chain. That's our. That's, we hang out with Baljeet. Yeah, that's pretty much our producer right now. So, but yeah, like look at Baljeet. Look at Isabella. Look I, at yeah, I don't Schmertz and Perry the platypus. I don't think it's underrated or overrated. I don't think it's either one. I think it's I think yeah, they try really hard that. to try to keep us entertained with two separate stories every single Yeah, yeah, episode. I was just gonna say, like the 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 uh, Perry the Platypus, like it like had mini episode within the episode right. and Phineas and Ferb doing their own thing. Like, yeah, and it, it's, it's, it was well put show. Because it's the same thing every time, right? Phineas and Ferb goes, What are we doing today? And then Perry goes, all right, I got to go fucking check on Doofenshmirtz. Yeah. <laughs> they both do it. And then Perry goes, what does this thing fucking do? And he's like, oh, it does. The whatever s- the fuck. I love that. The something a nader. <laughs> the something a nader. It does whatever the fuck I wanted to do, Perry the Platypus. I want to control 10 million termites with tiny helmets. But the funny thing was, is he was just trying to, he wasn't even trying to dominate the planet. It was just the tri-state area. <laughs> Dude, no, if you, okay. So I was going to. Like, this look, guy's got realistic goals. Yeah. No, but like, <laughs> he's shooting small. We'll start growing. It'll start expanding. If you don't aim too high, it's, it's really hard to miss. <laughs> no, but it's, you know what? You want to hear this really funny thing? In this other completely separate Disney show called Milo Murphy's Law, right? Uh huh. It's a cartoon still. Okay. You guys haven't seen it because. Yeah, yeah. P- Doofenshmirtz ends up in that show as the Lord of Time Travel. Oh, sick. Because of a plot that I just realized thinking about it is too obscure for me to try to explain. So, at long story short, they take Perry the Platypus and they take Doofenshmirtz and Doofenshmirtz goes, I'm going to try to be good. And so Perry the Platypus disappears and he's all like, you're not my friend. I thought you would, you, we were really doing this all these years because you, it was your job. I thought we were friends. And then he comes back. He goes, nope, nope, do fish birds. He doesn't talk, obviously. But he pulls out a checkbook, and he invested, like, a million dollars into do fish birds, his new business. I was just going to say, like, I think the character development on that side with do fish birds and Perry the Platypus was A1. That's a really good cartoon. Because I agree. That's why it's, like, it was perfectly rated. Yeah. It's because it's not trying to stay based in whatever it has going on. It does. It does whatever it wants. But it does it in a way where you learn about a character more than you normally would, right? With Fairly Odd Parents, I didn't learn anything about Timmy other than he's extremely just – he has an idea and he says it out loud. That's but it. Yeah, I he mean like grow. it just took a different concept though, right? Like Also – Oh, go ahead. Enough, say, I was going to say like in Fairly Odd Parents, it wasn't much about like 
felt like if you look at it like a, an experiment, those parameters were controlled, right? The characters are all the same, but the 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 like wishes and like all this craziness, like it makes you wonder, like, oh yeah, what if, you know? Right. That's what I liked about Fairly Odd Parents a lot. I, I, guess, I think it's underrated. I, I, don't, I don't think I felt like it didn't get because like at that time too it was competing with SpongeBob. Yeah. So like a lot of people would be like, oh yeah, I'd rather watch SpongeBob than Fairly Odd Parents. Oh no, I'd actually, I'd, if I'm being honest, as a kid, I would have rather watched Fairly Odd Parents than SpongeBob. Me, me too. Just because. Yeah. Okay, it leaves you to the imagination. In my opinion, it just leaves you to the imagination. Actually, I only liked it because objectively, because he was as wild and un like controlled as he was <laughs> whenever they had a problem they were always like he was always like wait 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 i could lose my fairly odd parents yeah right fuck you i'm not doing that shit who who's fucking with me who who here is trying to fuck with my fairly odd parents remember that movie where um jergen von strangle <laughs> remember he wanted to be in an action movie so he wished he could be in an action movie and he had to save his fairly odd parents <laughs> because jergen von strangle became evil <laughs> Also, there was that uh, the, where they entered the TV. That was a great. That oh, was that like a one hour special. Was, that was a great one. Oh my god! Actually, fuck. That was. Yeah, that one was a one. Changed the game for a moment. Okay, let's go on to the next. Um, do you have one for us? Who knew? You do Kim Possible. Kim Possible. Disney. I. Coming from because that was like I think that was obviously catered to girls, right? That was like the target audience was women on the earth girls in that one i think that, that show was uh, underrated i have complicated feelings about this one why he knows now <laughs> i know <laughs> he figured it out <laughs> he figured out why i gave him that look his initials are kp <laughs> uh, so what's up kp so, so imagine being me and having to compare yourself to that everybody i was it was two things it was either <laughs> What's up, KP? And I and I could take pride in it and be like, Kim Possible does cool things, guys. But as a boy in fucking fourth grade, that doesn't make that's not an argument. <laughs> that's not an argument. She's a cheerleader. <laughs> She's a cheerleader first. <laughs> Whatever the fuck she does for the rest of the episode, they don't give a fuck about. <laughs> she likes boys and clothes. That's what I got in trouble. That's what people <laughs> thought about when they called me KP. They weren't talking about the bitch who's hanging from ropes, kicking ass. Fucking taking names, no. But give it, give it ten years, and she's a she's a symbol of women, women empowerment. <laughs> and everybody loves Kim Possible. Everybody thinks she's so great. <laughs> she can do cool things. <laughs> and your initials are KP. Oh, now it's cool because you're an adult. <laughs> okay, overrated, underrated. <laughs> what do you think? I just said underrated. Underrated. I think it's underrated. I didn't have the problem of being known as KP. I thought it was like it, again. I, I got lightheaded doing that. <laughs> we'll be real. Sorry. I don't think it was one of the shows I would like want to watch. But if it was on and nothing else was on, I'd watch it. They had action in there. I was cool with that. Just because it was a girl lead, I wasn't like I don't know. It was. It wasn't like oh man, this is a girl show because it's a girl hero. No. No. I was like no. oh, it's a good show. No. The reason why I get so defensive about it was I love Totally Spice. <laughs> I do. I was about to bring that one up like, next. I love Totally Spice. So Kim Possible was my fucking shit. But people made fun of me for it. So that's why I think it's an amazing show. <laughs> Kim Possible? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. So I don't say it's underrated. I say it's overrated and properly so. <laughs> She's fucking badass. She knows everybody. But you think it's overrated? You mean properly though. Properly rated. So. Yeah, so you think it's rated correctly. Rated exactly correctly. The way it should be. I still think it's underrated because, like I said, again, at that time, it's competing with a bunch of other really good cartoons. I think it I think it could have gotten more, like, views. Had It could have been more popular. I mean, the whole reason – when I looked into why they canceled it, it broke my heart because it was just – the Disney Channel went and said it's less expensive <laughs> – to continue making new episodes when people are really just satisfied rewatching this. That's and what they did to Danny Phantom. Exactly. And that's the next show. And, Danny Phantom. And obviously, from my stance, I don't give a fuck. That show is super duper underrated. Yeah. <laughs> the most underrated show. That's probably my favorite it's show, dude. So fucking underrated. That's one of my. That's 
the character development, top one. the continuity, it kept the plot line solid. It continued moving forward, changing oh, yeah. ideas, new characters, new scenarios that all played into each other. Nah. Yeah, that thing was a fucking, that was a winner in my heart uh-huh. for sure. I, 100%. My favorite show. So there's a big bias here, but I still think it's underrated. No, I can't disagree with you there. Like, fuck. The idea of the uh, BTGF, right? No, BTGGF comes from Danny Phantom. Can you explain? For those of you who was watching, you know what I said. BTGGF. Explain. Big titty goth girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I could have looked it up, but I was like, that's too much work. <laughs> that's true. Well, it came from Danny Phantom. Oh, yeah. You don't see people taking pictures of other goth people. No, it's Sam. Sam. Yeah. They're that's right. That's true. Reason why. For sure. Sure. Oh, for sure, dude. For name sure. A, yeah, name a more iconic duo. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, that was a great show. I don't I felt so old. I, every episode was always really good. Um, a lot of good action scenes. Like I said, I think the only shitty thing about it is that they canceled it after season three. All right. I have a cartoon for you now. Okay, go ahead. It's a newer one. Maybe you probably haven't watched it. Gravity Falls. I've seen a few episodes. What do you think? I think... I think it's underrated. You think it's underrated? I think it's underrated. But I mean, here's my bias. I know that it has like some ties with Rick and Morty, which I fucking love Rick and Morty. Mm-hmm. So, with that being said... I don't know. Did it have a lot of popularity? Oh, to yeah. It? Oh, it did. It has a cult following, yeah. I mean, so does Rick and Morty, so. Right. No no surprise there. But, yeah. like, was it, like... Well, the reason... You got to understand the reason why... Because I think it's underrated, too. Because of the fact that, like, a lot of people looked at it and just went, ugh, it's another cartoon mystery with children in it. But in reality, it was, like, like again, one of those what-ifs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Definitely. And it well, even they had went, some like obscure, like you said, they they, they, they had that mystery component, which I always love and chose. Mm-hmm. Like, like we'll talk. I just want to bring this movie up, but like Knives Out. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, I've seen it. I love that movie because it makes you like, oh shit, that's how it all, you know, that's how it all comes together. I honestly thought Knives Out was so boring until Fuck that you. scene. <laughs> Fuck no, you. no, 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 hear me out. <laughs> until that scene where the butler, I mean, the maid didn't do it. We find out the mate didn't do it, and I went, oh my god, wait a second now. <laughs> That's when you got excited about it? See, I was like, see, I guess we come at it different, because I was trying to, like, become detective and try to figure it out before they come to the conclusion. So I'm like, okay, you know, how are they going to tie this all together? How does this work out? So that's what keeps me like in my like at the edge of my seat on those kind of... No, that's why I watch mysteries. I love to be caught off guard. I love to be told so we both love it but just for like a slightly different reasons yeah i like that's, that's why i love gravity falls and that's why i think it was underrated gravity yeah. falls literally just went and they were saying here's a weird town a weird town that where nobody talks about the weird things that go around here there are love gods zombies Loch Ness monsters there's even um a demonic extra dimensional beings <laughs> bent on destroying our planet <laughs> and then and then you're like wondering what how, what is all this you, they they hinted so well. There are these things called the journals. Do you know that? Do you know what they are? Kind of. Kind of. So there are three journals that each document every weird thing here. Uh-huh. If you have all three journals, you'll know everything about this town, and you'll know how to defend yourself against it. Yeah, yeah. But the main character only has one, and he has the last journal. So. What, here's how I see it as underrated, even though I've only seen like half of most of the first season. Is Again, if you compare it, to all the shows that was coming out at the time of it, right? Regular show, fucking Adventure Time, Steven Universe. All those got a lot more love. And I've heard of those shows, never watched them. Gumball, that's a good one, though. Oh. But, like, I have never, I didn't really hear of Gravity Falls until I started watching Rick and Morty. All right. So I didn't get as much clout as I thought it should, in my opinion. So you didn't watch a regular show or... I, I, I watched a few episodes, but, like, I don't know, regular show... And Gumball kind of had, like, a similar concept going on, in my opinion. Like, similar, in a sense. You know, where it was, like, wacky stuff going on with funny characters. Which, again, I love that kind of shit, but, again. I got a question for you. 
Go ahead. Do you think it's weird for adults to watch cartoons? I mean, I watch Rick and Morty all the fucking no, time. No, no, no. That's an adult cartoon, though, right? That's Futurama. <laughs> Futurama, also an adult it's cartoon. Australia plays a huge role, right? Yeah. Like, you watch movies from back in 2000 that are like... Right, but what I'm saying is brand new... Because you guys understand... I feel like brand new might be a bit much because you got to do research to actually figure out what's going on. What like, do you mean? back to watch some stuff is like you already know what's popping. Or like you already know no, what's I'm saying like when a new show comes out, a new cartoon comes out, how likely are you to watch it? Depends on... Cable, bro, so. No, I don't have cable either. It, I find that episode. It how depends on... to fight for it? A couple of things. It depends on like what is it scaled to or who's, who's the art audience it's targeting. If it targets like like teenagers or like young like older teenagers and it's not quite adult yet like maybe like i watched gumball i love that show that show was funny as fuck but i don't know man like a lot of cartoons are always catered to little kids and i just hmm. just haven't been into that i feel like i'm more likely to watch older stuff that i used to like yeah me too stuff. me yeah. too power rangers fucking i fucking rewatched power rangers just yeah, because like uh, danny phantom yeah. Last Airbender, Tom and Jerry. Like, and I also, I don't you know. guys are so old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys are so old. But well, I feel like our dudes today just, I don't know, they don't hit the same. They don't hit, yeah, they don't hit the same. They, what do you mean they don't hit the dude, same? Dude, nostalgia cartoons hit different. I cried at the end of regular show. Yeah, but that was still while we were like. Like in, in high, high school, school, right? Yeah, that was high school. So like, I cried at the end of Steven Universe. Also okay. still in high school. I didn't watch. What's a new one? I've cried so often during watching. See, I don't even know new new cartoons. Well, saying, like, yeah, that's why I'm saying you guys are all. <laughs> I think it's because like when we watch new cartoons, we don't have the same mindset as we did when we were. Like, no, a hundred percent. I agree with that. Yeah. Some of us are grow. Yeah. I'm not a kid. <laughs> you just gave us reasons why you're a kid, and then you just said you're not a kid. I'm not a kid. I'm an adult who watches cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> Right. What's your definition of adult? <laughs> What's my definition of adult? <laughs> what? <laughs> Guys, what the fuck? <laughs> what the All right, next. Wait, 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 wait! No, no, no! Next part, I have to defend myself here. I have to defend myself here. Do you have to wipe my fucking ass? <laughs> no, dude, dude I, I didn't fucking. Adult. I didn't have someone wipe my ass when I was a kid. <laughs> Metaphorically, my. <laughs> Do I ask you guys to help me out through every single part of my life? Am I going to my mom every single day saying, hey, mom, I don't know. I know this is kind of weird, but hey, um, I need new clothes. Can you go shopping for me? Oh, hey, mom, I, I got to put gas in my car. We have some, I don't want to bring up some examples, homie. What? 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 <laughs> All I'm saying is I don't. I fucking, I fucking. Hey, well, you remember I that Reno trip? College, I do all this fucking bullshit, and I'm still questioning on whether or not. I'm hey, remember that Reno trip? I'm just giving you shit for last week. What did I do last week? Because we were like, "What is your definition of?" It? Oh yes, I know you were shit for that. Also, the Reno trip, bro. She packed your bag for you. You I threw you threw your myself. clothes in the back of my car, not in a bag. Yeah. She helped you get your shit together. Just did, did I need it though? No. I literally wore, I brought one pair of clothes, threw it in there. That's all she did. She was like, kill me. Mr. Adult, you. everybody. <laughs> she gave me a fucking bag and I lose all, I lose all privilege. Speaking of, of adults, codename Kids Next Door. That's a one of, that's one of my favorites too. Fuck. That's, I, I think that show was, about it now. I was going to say, that show was super underrated, because even then, I don't feel like, it didn't have a lot of showtime on fucking Cartoon Network. Well, when we were, when, it had like, when maybe, it start, it stopped airing after the movie, remember? I know that, but like, they actually are thinking of a reboot. I don't know if they should. Yeah, not a reboot I feel like reboots, re reboots kind of can really ruin the original. It's not a reboot of Kids Next Door, though. It's a reboot of Galactic. Kids next door, where number one went after the last episode. I think I think where they ended it was perfect. That's why I think it's underrated. What do you mean carry the same audience? It's a universal concept. Well, I mean it's a universal concept. Kids love the idea of watching other kids pull off things that they don't know they could do. Like imagine if we had the confidence of a single member of Kids Next Door when we were six. We were like, you're a fucking adult. Oh, you go to work, don't you, you bitch ass? 
<laughs> oh, you gotta pay bills and have us do charge a bitch ass. You got to fight the lunch lady, bitch ass. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you did that to subs, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's because they were subs. They had they had no ability to claim our respect. <laughs> You know what I mean? They had one day to enter into a classroom of kids who think they're on top of the fucking planet. <laughs> Being a kid is you're amazing. You don't have to pay bills. You could effectively commit murder and still get <laughs> and still get let off, depending on the conditions. <laughs> oh, dude, that's how that one. No, check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Not all kids who commit murder are tried as adults. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> right. So imagine having that level of confidence. As a kids next door person, you got guns on that shit. They said we can kick your ass to an inch of your own life in kids next right. door. No one died in kids next door. No, yeah. I, like I said, kick their ass until an inch of their life. Were they literal guns? I thought it was like no, yeah, it was like mustard guns, ketchup no, they, guns. They had literally some had one that was a laser. They had David. They, <laughs> they did have several just lasers. <laughs> <laughs> they did have a couple laser guns. They did, have, and so, some of them were just. And you're right. They were the rest of them were normally like not like super insane like bullets or shit like that they were like here's this bottle of spoiled milk <laughs> some of them were just giant rocks all right we'll do we'll do one more or what's your uh well, we could do we'll do like one more where we can go in depth and then we'll just do a speed round all right i like that um last big one arthur i never i never no yeah that's not a big one uh, okay i, I have an opinion right, of yeah, arthur i'll, I'll switch it it's steve <laughs> arthur it's <laughs> gonna say samurai jack Underrated. could be a big one samurai, samurai jack, jack. But I feel like we're both just going to say that's the one super fucking underrated. Do you disagree? Yeah, no, it's 100% completely underrated. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. To be fair, it's not a, it was an adult swim show. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Oh, I thought it, it was, was Cartoon an, Network. It was an adult cartoon. Okay, so we can't do that one then. It wasn't a Because we're just doing like kids. All right. Tom and Jerry. I can't. You know I literally can't. You know I literally, physically, as a person can't because then... What little tiny respect you guys have for me here. It just goes out the window. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom and Jerry? Oh, yeah, I feel it's like... It's like saying Looney Tunes. Yeah. Also, uh, classics. Yeah, they, yeah I, think, I think they just go into the classics compile. You can't, they, even though, hear me out, even though Looney Tunes and... We gotta Tom do, like, controversial you at shows. Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. I knew you were gonna bring that up, and I'm prepared. Best... I, I think that was dark show. I think that was super underrated too. Yeah, did. it was super underrated because it it grossed people out. It freaked people out. You oh know yeah. What I mean? Like, in two. Also, to be fair, if you lived in the Bible Belt during that time at all, watching Billy and Mandy was effectively the same as worshiping the devil. <laughs> I mean, it was like listening to rock music in like the seventies, right? Right. People exactly. Fucking, like my grandma was like, "What is 80s. this show?" And I was like, "That's well, that's death." Yeah. And those are the two kids that own it. Yeah. <laughs> How, why did they own his ass? He lost a bet trying to claim a hamster's life. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Actually, fun fact. They, they had a tie-in with another show. with the Remember with the bear with the brain? What was that one called? <laughs> you mean the short? No, it was a cartoon. It, it didn't have more than one season at, then at that point. They had crossovers with fucking Billy and Mandy. Yeah, I know. It's uh, Baron Von Strucker, right? Evil Con Carnet. Evil Con Carnet, right. <laughs> And he was his whole thing was he was a brain inside of a bear. He was an evil his, genius with yeah with with his brain inside of a bear <laughs> and his stomach inside of a bear and the stomach could talk to the brain. Yeah, what was the stomach? I'm looking at the picture now and I'm like, oh shit, I forgot. Because yeah, I remember the stomach could talk. Yeah, that's so funny. And the their whole mission was just going around the world trying to find his body parts. That's right. And the only body parts they ever claimed were his two front teeth. <laughs> I that was it. I love those shows though. Yeah, they like they like took like they took kids who were like growing up into that like darker era. I mean, no, to be fair. Yeah. I mean, they're like introducing dark concepts to people, yeah. which I think was cool cuz like, I don't know, like you're going to eventually run into dark shit one day, so it's like, hey, let's kind of warm you up to like making it goofy and childish and I don't think it got as much love as it should. You know, that's why it's underrated. Right. I mean, to be fair, right? If, if I'm being honest, Grimm goes down as one of the funniest characters <laughs> I've ever seen. His whole thing is he's a Jamaican dude. <laughs> he's a Jamaican dude who's a Grim Reaper who's, who serves literally. And that's what I love the most about it. It was effectively Billy and Mandy <laughs> split their ownership of the Grim Reaper, right? 
Because whatever Billy says he has to do, he has to do. But you have Mandy. She's just a fucking badass. Who, like, literally, literally, with the, you know, uh, Evil Kong Carne? Yeah, yeah. There was an episode where she just owned his island. Yeah. <laughs> she took control she just, of his island. It was like, this is she mine She could have been a dictator, man. She could have. But... She was a dictator. She went to that island. She ruled everything and then went, all right, I'm going home. <laughs> Finish up your thoughts so, so we can go into the uh, Either way, speed all round. I'm saying is it was great concept, very dark, very evil, but also lighthearted. Yeah. Okay. So let's go into like quick rounds where you just say if it's underrated or overrated. Okay. Did you say the show? or? Yeah. Right. First one, my life as a teenage robot. Uh, underrated. underrated. Uh, for sure. Foster film for imaginary friends. <laughs> overrated. Yeah, I agree with that too. I don't think it was that good. Ben 10. Overrated. Overrated. He has 10 monsters. That's all he does. Powerpuff Girls. Underrated. Underrated. <laughs> I love that show. Him? Him was before his time. <laughs> I love that show. <laughs> You guys might not know this one. Do you guys know Jackie Chan Adventures? Yes, that's underrated, underrated. as fuck. Underrated as fuck. I love Jackie Chan Adventures. really got so many seasons, and nobody talks about it. I know. It's such a good show. Have you guys seen Recess? Oh, that's overrated. super underrated. You say overrated? I think it's <laughs> underrated. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are just kids. <laughs> they know. had a little mafia going on. Yes. <laughs> Looney Tunes? Underrated. Invader Zim? Overrated. Underrated. Oh. Underrated. Invader Zim? Underrated. Uh, for both? Uh, for what? Uh, Looney Tunes? Uh, no, I say uh, Looney Tunes is overrated now. It has, now? It has new episodes. Underrated. Oh, it does? I'm talking about old Looney Tunes. Old Looney Tunes is still overrated because they Oof. weren't that funny to me. <laughs> Fuck you too. Shit. Invader Zim is super underrated though, in my oh, opinion. Obviously. It did, I did have nightmares. I love that show. There was that thing with the moose out. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, the moose in Invaders. Proud in. family. Mm. Yeah, I didn't like it either. Like, I don't know, it man. Just, just one of my type of show. It has its moments. Yeah, it does. It does. It had good concepts. It was cool for the idea that it was, like, one of the first, like, here's a cartoon about a black family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. But the way they, like, went about it. Uh, just, it was, just it didn't just, hit us hard. I will say, Sugar Mama invented the idea of badass grandma. I love that. She would <laughs> fall asleep and, hey, turned out she yeah. turned that back on. Yeah. <laughs> they had great characters. It's just like everything around them just wasn't that good, in my opinion. The Bebe kids were boring. Next. Uh, Rugrats? Overrated. I didn't like the Rugrats. Overrated. Kind of weirded me out. <laughs> I already know Kemal's answer for this one, but totally spot. <laughs> I think it's underrated. Okay. Yeah, I'll, but yeah. I agree there. Unbiased opinion, underrated. Sonic? Ooh. Underrated. And the, honestly, they had a bunch of different a, they had a bunch of different iterations of Sonic in yeah, cartoons. Like some of them really go in depth about Sonic's backstory. You guys do Ed and Eddie already? No, we haven't. I think that one was I think it's underrated. That thing's underrated. But the funny thing was, like, my parents, told, like, that was the one show my parents didn't want me to watch. They invented the thirst. They were like, that one's gonna make you for sure stupid as fuck. And I was like, oh, okay. Nah, they invented the hustle, dude. <laughs> they did. All they wanted was jawbreakers. And Ooh. they got them sometimes. Chalk Zone. Underrated. Underrated. I wow, love that dude. show, dude. That show was cool. I as had fuck. to stay up till 11 o'clock at night just to watch one episode on yeah. Nickelodeon. <laughs> Do you remember Ozzy and Drix? Yeah. Remind me. Have you have you ever seen the movie Osmosis Jones? Yeah, underrated as fuck. Yeah, I think underrated, it's underrated as fuck. That was good. They changed the cart. They changed the uh, animation style a little bit, but like, I like, I still like that they tried to bring it into a cartoon. I think it's underrated. <laughs> Animaniacs. That one, that one has like a little bit of controversy to it, but I think it's underrated still. I think it's so fucking underrated. I don't get why more people don't watch it. You know it's, what I mean? It's pretty old, isn't it? No, they came out with a new season. They got three new. They get three new seasons. Hulu bought them. They, even, I should. Did I not show you guys the new opening? I love it because they Hulu bought them and then went. We have to go get even more meta. So the opening in the middle of the opening, they're like, who? They it shows Hulu with a bunch of money stacks <laughs> and a sign a contract that says three seasons, <laughs> and they sign it. And I watched the first season already three times. And I'm sad that there's... Like, like, Animaniacs, like, different, because they're very, like, current. No, yeah. The new Animaniacs, like, 
were all like, what's happened to... Because they, they dropped in like, what, 95? Yeah, and 98. 98. Yeah, I just looked it up. So they dropped in 98, and then they picked back up here, and they are like, what did we miss? And so, uh, fucking, uh, <laughs> I loved it, because, so, he eats a tablet, and he's like, I know everything! And it's like, oh, and then he just starts roasting the presidents. <laughs> he was like, Obama brought hope! And so Clinton thought, dope! <laughs> this should be a breeze! <laughs> and then, it wasn't. <laughs> And then they showed to him. Yeah, like Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I thought you said Clinton. No, I said Clinton. It was like Obama brought home, so Clinton thought, nope, this should be a breeze. And then and something else. Dexter's Laboratory. You already asked that. that. Oh, I did that one? Yeah. Oh, okay, then Dave the Barbarian. Ba, ba, barbarian. Ba, ba, barbarian. <laughs> Dave the Barbarian. Huge bar. I can sing the whole thing. Oh, song. wimp. <laughs> Don't make me. His mom and dad. <laughs> what? No, I'm not going to sing the whole thing. Though. Completely underrated. Not enough people watch it to this day. I love that show. Yeah, you know you can't underrated. even find it on a streaming service? Really? Yeah. That sucks. It's such an amazing show. His it's so funny. Megan I, I got Ken. the last one. It's still like a little kid's one. Caillou. Caillou. <laughs> I only... I they took... It, my only problem with Caillou is it was underrated Caillou, until people took that one Caillou. fucking song. Yeah. Hey, Caillou, I know, right? <laughs> I think it's overrated. I think it was like PBS took off Caillou because it was like a lot of parents were complaining that like Caillou was too much of a brat and wasn't really like a good influence or something. Oh, really? Yeah. I think they took it down recently, like off the air. I think. Yeah. I knew some dark things about Caillou. I heard like, oh, he's like... He actually was a cancer patient or some shit like that. I was like, that what was the a, fuck? Yeah, that was the whole thing. They were like, yeah, let's put a ball kid in television. And then everybody was like, yeah, he has cancer. <laughs> but my ass was like, he might have cancer, but fuck, he's clearly beating it. He's been on the air in this law. <laughs> Doing what he fucking does. Hey, mother, can I go to the store with you? No, Caillou, you need to stay home. I'm concerned. Mother, <laughs> I'm going to fucking kick the shit out of you. Unless you let me come to the store with you. I want to look at the pretty marbles. Why? I want to put them in my mouth, mother, and then die. What's going on right now? <laughs> Anyways, that's a basically an entire Caillou episode. I've never seen Caillou. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, this is like a new concept we're doing. Like doing over underrated or rating stuff like that. So let us know if you want us to keep doing shit like this. But uh, yeah. It's your boy Maui. And it's your ba ba barbarian. Ba ba barbarian. Dave the barbarian. Huge bada wimp. His sisters Megan Candy are a princess and a chimp. His mom and dad are the king and queen of the land of old Jarkov. They've come to say the evil now. Candy is the boss. It's your boy Maui. I mean, (laughs) 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 I fucked that up so hard. (laughs) He finds a way. He finds a way. It's your boy Maui. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. I'm waffles. (laughs) And this is Cow Surfing. Peace.